All right, so we are back in the Summit Racing. What do you call this place? The shop? Yeah, the, the Summit Racing Studio. So we are back in the Summit Racing Man Cave, where we are working on our 1957 Chevy Bel Air. So you guys may not believe us, but in six days, we are driving this chariot 1,800 miles across country back to Utah. We're Thanks gonna do it. Too. So we'd like to thank our partners over at Summit Racing for helping us out with this build series, because without them, this opportunity wouldn't be real for us. So we pulled the 57 Chevy into their studio. We're gonna be completely completely revamping the drivetrain. We're gonna be installing one of the coolest engines out there. So stick around and find out what it is, but today- Hey Willie, yeah. um, we don't use Ford stuff around here. You know, yeah. we, I mean, we love Fords. We sell parts for Fords, but you know, we're GM men through and yeah. through, so. GM. GM. So it's gonna greatest be- Greatest motors ever. Yeah, greatest motors <laughs> on earth. <laughs> anyway, that was the first time Hillbilly hasn't had a comeback. So you guys just witnessed it firsthand. It's what it sounds like when he's silent. Today's goal is to strip this thing down. We're gonna get it torn apart and figure out exactly what we need. We're gonna start at the back and pull the rear end out. With the help of the boss, Justin, Hillbilly, and our bolt and nut guy, we got Andy from boltsandnuts.com. He's slinging the camera today. In order to get this rear end out, we're gonna take the wheels and tires off, make it a little bit easier. So we just unhooked the e-brake cable the quick way because we're changing it and putting a new one in it. Because the problem is, is you don't never know if the cable seized up inside here or where it's at. So we're putting a new one in. They had a normal flat washer, another flat washer, a lock washer, then another flat washer. Man, that's some insurance. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news. It's not seized in there. It's just got weight from the rear end right now, but I was able to get that bolt started to come out. Hey, can I give you a hand with that? Right now. Ah! So what I'm doing, I'm just disconnecting the drive shaft from the front of the rear end so we can pull it out. Got it! These bolts are not seized, so that makes me super happy. A lot of times, if you're on a budget, whatever, change them. But where we have an in-house bolt specialist, we're gonna send him with Andy and he's gonna bring us back some fresh bolts tomorrow. Just like magic. So as soon as we get the drive shaft unhooked, um, we're gonna drop the lift, raise the axle, and then we'll drop the leaf springs out and then lift the car up. And this rear end will be out. The drive shaft's out, it's just resting on that e-brake bracket. We're gonna let it down and this rear end's ready to come out. So this is exciting. This is the first of many components that we gotta change. That <laughs> rusted in. And it's swing like a rocket. Wind's moving. Bada bing, bada boom. We got it. All right, let's take this up. So yeah, the protectant kept these bolts clean. There you go. It's got all the fancy tools. That brake line is so hard that this one, it won't, it won't collapse it. Oh yeah. All right, this in theory should come out. So Hillbilly got smart using that dang brain of his again and realized that it's a grommet. So we're gonna try to just pry it out. Oh, <laughs> so, well, uh, we can add that to the list of things we need. Oh, okay. do you hear all that oh. stuff inside it? <laughs> the gas tank is out. Look how solid the trunk yeah, like, pan is in this car. The trunk floor is like the only thing that's not been touched by rubber and it's A value on here. I wonder if this was a brown or a white car. One we'll never know. Wonder. Should we pull the drive shaft? Or should we leave it in in case it leaks fluid? See, that's why Justin's here. He's the smart one. Well, we're gonna cut this exhaust off, but I don't think we need to now. This is a good point. Get to cut out the exhaust with that piece. What do you think of all this, Hillbilly? Just change it all? Yeah. yeah, let's upgrade the disc brakes to get rid of the drums. Oh yeah. Having something with a lot of power like that 5.0, we need disc brakes. So it's a 5.0 plus 1.2. <laughs> so it's board over? So Justin's gonna grab the sawzall. We're gonna cut the rest of the exhaust out because most of it is rotted off, but we've just got these little pieces right here he's gonna get out of our way. So we were gonna pull the front suspension, but we wanna make sure we have everything here, lay it out, make sure it's right before we do that. So we're gonna get the transmission pulled and we should be able to pull it backwards and drop it out. This car has a four speed standard transmission in it. I'm sliding the drive shaft out. We looks pretty oiled in there. Yeah, we went ahead and rolled our oil catcher underneath there to make sure it don't leak. Cause it's gear oil and it makes a big mess. And it stinks. You know what stinks worse than gear oil? Burnt gear oil. Yeah. The smell you can't get rid of for a long time, especially if it gets in the carpets of your vehicle. This has a rear engine mount. It doesn't have a transmission cross member, so we don't have to take the transmission cross member out and try to support the engine. The engine's sitting on four mounts right now. 
Well, let's pull a tranny out. Put it away in there. I've seen, I've seen this maybe. <laughs> I've seen this before. I see a rusted over clutch and a seized up throwout bearing. Saginaw transmission sitting on the tires. So tomorrow we're gonna get the drivetrain pulled out of this thing and really get it torn down to where we know how to rebuild it. We'll get the parts here, we'll get them all laid out and we'll figure out where things are gonna go and start rebuilding this car because we're down to six days. We're running out of time. That's all we're gonna do tonight. So we'll be back in the morning. It is tomorrow. All right, so what is the next day? Our pallet has arrived. So we finally have parts. Day two, we've got a lot of stuff to do today. But first, we're gonna get all this stuff off the pallets, figure out what showed up. Yes, this is um, this is all the parts. Let's get to yes. it. Custom tube transmission X member, black. Trans LS, oh, LS engine into small block Chevy Gen 1 and 2 chassis. Brake booster. Power four wheel disc conversion. Tank LS line kit. Oh, fuel line. What about the flux capacitor? Full Flowmaster exhaust kit. The Outlaw series, American Thunder. We've got a few parts that need installed, but we got a few big components that we're still working on figuring out where they're at. Okay, we're gonna work on getting all the steering dropped out of this so we can keep getting this all disassembled. Right now I'm doing two bolts. This doesn't have ball joints like a normal spindle. It has two bolts that bolt to the back of the spindle on both sides, I'm gonna get those undone. And then I gotta drop it off the drag link, which it's not a normal U-joint style, it's a ball and socket, and then two nuts on that side, and then the idler. We'll get started on this. Gotta take the whole whole hub apart, take the strum and everything off. It's a nut and bolt, so it's spinning. Car key removed. Got one size fits most wrench. I was going to just drop the steering out. Robbie came in and says, well, why don't you just drop the spindle and take the steering and spindle all out as one and we're just going to throw it away and get rid of it because it's getting all updated stuff. I'm doing that route now. Taking a look at this, Hillbilly's gonna drop the tie rod and we're gonna start loosening the lower control arms. I mean, this is gonna be simple. We'll take the brake line off, clip out, and drop this whole assembly off. Take the upper control arm off once we get into the engine compartment. So we're just working on the lower suspension. We have replacements for all of this stuff. So right now, it's just tear it all down and get it down to the foundation so that we can build everything back out. We're not taking any chances. All new bearings, all new steering. Here we go. Removing the tie rod. <laughs> now it's gonna pop. This brake line clip off, and it holds the rubber line into a bracket on the frame. Bolt the metal line into the rubber line. <clears throat> just like that. So all I have to do now is just do a little bit of tappy tappy, and hopefully it goes <clears throat> It's not just gonna go poof. So it didn't work with the tappy tappy, so I'm using a pickle fork. So Hillbilly's working on that side, so I decided to start on the passenger. We're just gonna drop as much of the suspension out and assembly as we can. Trying to use Hillbilly's little grinder technique. Got it. So we got the shock all released out of there, got the coil spring out of there. So now it's gonna be safe to pull these four bolts, drop the lower control arm out. Which in turn means the whole assembly, spindle assembly and lower control arm will all just fall on the ground. All right, one side's done. So we've got the coil out of the other side. Uh, me and Hillbilly will hurry and just get it pulled and then we'll be able to lower this down and start working on the top side. Things are happening, look at this. No more wheels on the Bel Air. And we have five days until this thing has to drive. Actually, I just routed it. And we're gonna be over 2,000 miles because we're gonna be dropping down into Louisville most likely, heading over to Kansas City, down into Wichita, back up into Denver, and all the way back to Ephraim. All those zigzags are gonna add a few hundred miles. Five days and there's nothing, there's no wheels and tires and there's no engine. So, and we're still stripping stuff off. I haven't put one new part on it yet. Got it. Dunzo. Suspension's out. 
All right, we've got the lower control arms and the spindles off. Now we're gonna lower the car down, take the hood off and start pulling the engine. What our goal is today is to get this thing completely stripped down to where once the rest of the parts get here, we're gonna be able to rebuild all of this. So we do have some lower control arms, some upper control arms and a few odds and ends here, but we wanna be able to just throw the suspension in. I think tomorrow morning we should have a rear end. So we'll be able to get this thing to where it's at least gonna be able to have wheels on it. We've got an engine and transmission that we're gonna be putting in it, but we're only gonna show you guys final installation on the engine. So you're going to want to make sure that you click the link, go to the Summit Racing YouTube channel and watch us assemble and install the 6.2 LS over on Summit Racing's channel. Give them some love. They're almost at 200,000 subscribers. So here's the deal. If I can talk you guys into going over and subscribing to their channel, help us get over that 200,000, there's a chance we might be able to come back here and do some more cool stuff with them. So head over, watch some videos, learn some things, and then come right back and keep watching our videos. Time to hood delete the Bel Air. Look at his man hands, how you just like grab it. 50, 60 year old fasteners. Which means they were made right in the first time. Yes, good quality fastener. Currently, Hillbilly is deleting the hood. We've got a radiator that's got to come out, an engine that's got to come out, and a whole lot of things and such that need to come out. Well, let's go ahead and call it cold air intake. <laughs> Demi's grandma called. She wants her screen back for her door. So she's gonna cut it out so she can take it back home. And six mounting this. Right now I'm just getting all the heater hoses and coolant hose lines and everything undone so we can get the radiator pulled out. Luckily most everything is dry because this hasn't had fluids in it in a long time. It's not too dry. I see coolant. I have the and it's pretty clean coolant too. And we've got the alternator all wires all cut off because we are gonna be changing all of the wiring. Oh, oh, yep. We need a catch pan. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. So here's the problem, is I assumed that there was no coolant in it, and that thing is full. Here's another problem, is I seen coolant, and I should have known better, but I still done it. <laughs> it's half stopped. It's just a slow drizzle. Apparently, old cars hold coolant. We're gonna get the upper course port off, the radiator out, stop the bleeding. We don't know what this is, but we're gonna take it out anyway. It's like a spreader bar. Don't lose your washer. Oh man, homemade spreader bar. Yeah, all right, all the mounts are cut. Now we gotta try to get this radiator out. Oh, shit. Well, I wasn't trying to tear them, I was trying to move it so that we could drain it. Well, thank you. Radiator's out. Might have made a humongous mess, but it's out. So we're gonna go eat now. So we'll be right back. How good he is at that. We went and ate, we're back. Andy's gonna be helping us work on this thing. We got the boss slinging the camera. We got Hillbilly doing Hillbilly things. You think we're safe to pull this one off now? No, yeah. we made the huge mess. I think what I wanna do is excite those and see if the headlights work. Know what I mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean, man. Um, this, if this is a six volt system. That looks like a 12 volt battery to me. We use 24 volts in my daughter's power wheel and it's meant for like three volts. This makes it go faster. Yeah, but you remember the last time we used a 12 volt system to start something? The tell handler just spun like a top. We're basically just moving stuff out of the way. Try to not make a huge mess. Why don't you use a knife? This is what I have. So I'm thinking we're gonna remove this battery box and possibly put the new battery up in the front, right in this little frunk or in the trunk. I'm not really sure yet, but that's gonna give us a lot of extra room to put that LS, a 6.2 LS GM performance engine in here. That's I can't even wait. Battery box. Yeah, there's, oh. there's been some work to this car at one point in its life. Makes you wonder if this motor had work done to it. it. Probably did. It's got new brake lines and fuel lines that somebody's added. Somebody's been in here at some point. Building a racer. Maybe have some pop rivets over here I'm gonna have to remove. Now, I wanna point out something for everybody out there in YouTube land. This is the first drill that Andy has ever operated with a drill bit, removing a rivet. I am super pumped to be a part of this. That's also the first lie Ravi has ever told. <laughs> Execute it perfectly, Andy. <laughs> How'd I do? What? Oh. I love that, you know. What is it? Water pump. Water pump. We're pulling the water pump off so we can get to these front bolts. Now we have a direct connect to the engine. 
So the motor's just about ready to be pulled out. Hillbilly's gonna get the heater core out. We're gonna try to do something to where we can get this, get a little bit of heat or a little bit of blower, something. Do we really want to? Cause your wife gets cold even when it's hot. We'll be sweating. We'll see. Driving down the road. So yeah, we're gonna lift the car up, get this motor pulled. Now there's so much room for activities. It really, like at first I didn't think it was gonna fit. Now it looks like it'll fit. Okay, so now I'm gonna unbolt these four bolts that hold the carburetor on so we can bolt a lift plate on. And lift plate is exactly what it does, is exactly what it's called. It lifts the motor out of the uh, motor out of the car. Carburetor is now off. I just gotta undo the fuel line, the choke cable, and then it'll be done. There she be. All rust up and seized up. Alright, Andy, I need four bolts longer than that. I don't even know what it is. Here you go. Look at you. That's why we bring a fastener expert. Hey Robbie, put the wrench on that nut, please. Whoa, that goes up like mega fast. Look how Paul set up. No way. <laughs> this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I like this cherry picker. I think it's sick. Do we really need to look at one of those cherry pickers? That thing is sick. So do you think it's the three main or four main? This will probably honestly be one of the only times we actually pull a Gen 1 small block Chevy. They were barely, I mean, this is way before, 350 didn't come out until 74. Hey Robbie, looks like it was re gasking in some time because it's rubber from there. Uh, the hard work is done. Now we've got to get everything cleaned up and start taking out the steering. Removing the bell housing off the back of the motor. We're not keeping the motor, but we are keeping the transmission, so we want to keep the bell housing. All right, so next, we're over here hey with- Hey guys! Hey guys, Robbie here. Right now, Hillbilly's taking off the bell housing. Uh, we decided we were gonna keep the, the starter. Uh, we decided we're gonna keep it, just keep it attached. It we're taking it off, off to remove it. How many bolts? <laughs> Got one bolt left. One out. bolt left? Out. And it's out now, we're ready. Boom, just, it's easy as that. Okay, got it all unbolted. It's not coming loose. I think it's rusted together, so I'm just gonna give it some light tap. Ooh. And there's the bell housing. And Robbie, I'm very surprised this clutch works. It's so rusty. I'm surprised it didn't break fingers when you push the clutch pedal. We've got a few things under here we're gonna get disassembled. They're, these are the rear motor mounts. We don't need them. When we're putting the LS in, they're eliminated. So Hillbilly's gonna hurry and take those off. These are actually, for being, 1957, these are in good shape, actually. Really good shape for being vintage. That one's never even been on. We got a new, we have a new steering kit from Summit Racing. Has everything we need. So we're gonna install this new one while we're at it. So it even comes with new bolts. So we'll beat the old bolts out, put the new ones in, and we'll hurry and just install this while we're at it. Okay. All right, that's out. Now put this up there and we'll put the, so this is upside down. I'm just gonna turn it so that it's the correct way. That's probably why that bolt's not tight. Oh yeah, what kind of washer is that? That is a flat washer. <laughs> oh, that is a center lock. That is a flat washer. <laughs> well, no. Ding, ding, sir. ding. Andy wins. Name that washer. <laughs> we just installed our first new part. So we're going back together. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it's it. It's about time. 48 hours into our build, our first part goes on. <laughs> All what right. a glorious moment. Okay. Why don't we just take the rest of the day off? Yeah, perfect. Expertly installed. We've got an entire brake line kit that we are going to be replacing this with. So I've got it all disconnected. This had the old one cylinder master. The front and rears were ran off of the same exact master cylinder. We've got it loose. We don't really know how to get it off, but we're going to figure it out. Big set screw. Big set screw, they put a Allen or a carter key so it can't spit back out. Pull so far and there's a groove, you gotta pick it up out of the yeah. groove. We're gonna hurry and get this all cleaned up, lower the car and figure out how to take that steering gear off of the steering column. All right, so I'm gonna just cut this steering shaft off because on these 57 Chevys, you pull the entire rod out of the column and we're just gonna cut it. And then we're gonna make a double D on the end of it and put the new box in. It didn't hit my foot luckily, but we cut it off. This is a remanufactured or re-stamped upper control arm. So it's got brand new bushings, it's got a rod, it's got a new ball joint, and we're just gonna put the assembly right back in. 
when we go to put this all back together. That's the nice thing about Summit Racing. Literally every single part that we're putting on this car this week is coming right from their warehouse with in-stock parts to get you back on the road. Head over to summitracing.com if you guys need parts for any of your old projects. They've probably got it in stock or can get it shipped out to you. They have four locations across the country. We're super pumped on it. I can't wait to be driving this in like four days. Trying to get the burr off the end of this will come out of the column. All right, so we've met our goal for the day. Steering is out, the shaft is out of the column, upper control arms are out. We have this completely torn down to where when we get our parts, this thing's going right back together to starting tomorrow. So we're gonna go get some rest, be back in the morning. So it is tomorrow. So it is the next day. We just checked the block casting numbers on this on this 283, so it's got 3789935, which was built from 1961 to 1964. So what that tells us is this is not the original engine, it's valueless, and we're gonna throw it away. So we're gonna put this out in the scrap bin, it's out back, and get back to work on getting the rear end and a few other odds and ends set in this car, because technically we have three days left, including today. So we have today, tomorrow, and Friday. To get this car running, we're on track. Yeah, I think so. This is, um, we're in good shape. We have a shell, we have parts. There's things to be done, Robbie Layton. What? I've never seen a shock do that. I didn't really thread in like that. So now I gotta get a pair of channel locks to get the other part out. How do they usually come out? One bolt on the top. I didn't know there was a bolt on the bottom. That's how the heat are supposed to come out and usually come out. Let's see if this one will come out the same way or come out like it's supposed to. No, came out the same way. Okay, now I'm going to be installing the upper and lower control arms for this car. So it's going to be the second part that I'm going to be putting on is going to be one of the uppers or lower control arms. And after that, it doesn't really matter because it's starting to go back together now. Make sure those are put in. The one top control arm still in here. I know this one was the driver's side because the passenger one I handed to Robbie. Driver one I handed to Robbie, the passenger one is stuck in the engine bay. So I'll just go off that one for the upper, which it looks like this one is the passenger upper. Here we go, installing the first upper control arm. Oh no. It's right here. Oh. oh, I thought it went inside. My fingers don't work very well with gloves on. Okay, I can't tighten those up because there is shims that's on that fender. They have to put shims back in it so that way it's still somewhat aligned. When it goes to the alignment shop, they can have an uh, easier time getting aligned. So I'm gonna try to reach them with this stool. I highly doubt I'm going to be able to, but it's worth a shot. Got one, oh, two, three. And we marked them LB for left back, RF right front, RB right back. Got the left one installed, just putting the nuts on the bolts and then putting the shim in the spot that it goes, which is the left back. Just got them tightened up. Now to work on the lowers. Just cleaning up the surface where the washer and bolt will not flush, so that way there's no obstruction, so it will sit flush. I got it right the first time on which side is what. I was lucky. But I dropped the other bracket piece and Boss Lady has it. <laughs> you like that apron, don't you? Heck yeah. Justin, at Summit Racing, you might be missing an apron when we leave. <laughs> Perfect. I like it, like it, I like it a lot. So in a way you can tell if you have the right lower control arms on the right side when you're installing new ones. The easiest way is to take one side off and match it up, put it on, do the other side. Well, we didn't, we was in a hurry to get this whole thing gutted so that way we can just start putting all the new parts on because we're on a very small time crunch. A way you can tell is with the wrong side control arm put up, the spring pocket doesn't line up with the spring bucket. Lower ball joint is way off from the upper. They should be almost straight up and down from each other. So I'm gonna go get this other side installed. Nah, it's not moving, bud. Where's the JB Weld? Let's just JB Weld it where it sits. I don't think that's quite the option yet, but I like the enthusiasm. <laughs> um, what do you mean that's not quite the option yet? <laughs> He's been at this for like an hour. <laughs> Move on from that bump stop and hang around the controller. Everything will be fine, hillbilly! He's gone, I'm gonna try it again. No! <laughs> just keep working on other stuff. It's almost in. I'll let him do the other side. <laughs> let Robbie do the other side. I'm giving him only two minutes. Can't get it in, then we're moving on. One more trick. 
You only have 30 seconds left. No fair. You have two minutes of luck. It's going. It's going. All but in. I don't think it's, I don't think it's working. No, it is. It is. It is. It is. It's in, it's in. Told you it'd work. Let's not do the other side. No, we'll make them do it so they can get struggle. Finally, the other lower control arm. <laughs> an hour later. Hey, <laughs> not an hour. About. It was like 10 minutes later. So earlier, you, uh, if you remember, Robbie mentioned about trying to get to see if this works because for some reason, Demery's always cold. The heater blower motor, we got my jumper wires, M12 battery. We're gonna hook it up and see what it does. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Here goes. Does it work? Yes, it does. No way. This is not easy. That needs cleaned out. But all right, so we have parts that have shown up. So Summit Racing offers a few different options of rear ends. We opted to go with the bare housing that we can put in this 57. We can set it in the leaves and set our pinion angle so it matches the transmission. So that's what we're gonna do here in a little bit is we're gonna get the housing out, get the leaf springs hung, put it in, and then we're gonna start building our third member. We want the Curry 300 gears with a posi track. That way we can cruise this thing across the country. And we went with a lube locker gasket. Over here, you may notice this is a 500 horsepower 6.2 LS GM factory performance crate engine. I thought you were gonna say this is a 5.0. <laughs> oh, this right here, my friends, is not a 5.0. You're gonna wanna make sure that you head over to Summer Racing's channel and watch me and Justin assemble this thing and drop it in the car. Once we get the housing where we need it, Hillbilly's gonna get back to work on the front suspension. That's gonna take up the rest of our day. So we've got a lot of stuff to do. Maybe Chevy powered, but stranded by a Ford rear end. So this needs to go here. Now keep in mind, Summit Racing offers every single one of these parts. That's why we're here. This would be a nightmare in weeks, if not weeks, trying to get the right parts. So on these leaf springs, they don't come with the rear bushings. So we got some moved rear bushings. We're just gonna press them in with the vise. The rear leaves come with one bushing. So you've gotta press your one, leaf, your one bushing in. So this is it after it's put in. Now we can take this to the car, get this bolted in while Hillbilly and Justin are doing this one. Pretty tight. It was just pushing out a little bit of paint. Rust. Yeah, a little bit of rust, that'll work. Show you why we went with the bare housing. So we're gonna put our axle perches up on the springs. We're gonna set the axle at the exact degree that we need. So that's why we did it. <clears throat> All right, that's what we needed. Nice. Did you get a tetanus shot? No, mine's up, uh, is past due like by four years, five years. Well, you should probably get one for working on this. Some of the catalogs I've worked on for you, it's a lot worse than this is. I don't know about that. So we're about a half a hole off up front. So this bushing is essentially gonna have a little bit of stress on it, but it is what it is at this point. This car's gotta drive us home, so we're doing what we gotta do. Now we're gonna measure center to center of our, our pins, and we're gonna actually measure out where our purchase should go so that this rear end is centered in the leaves. 46 and a quarter. We're gonna do some simple math. We know that this is centered. We know this is equal length. We're gonna do 55 and three quarter minus 46 and a half, divide that, 46 and a quarter, divide that by two. That'll be our center mark to outside of flange. We'll mark that and we'll know where it needs to be. We're doing this all bare. That way it stays light. So what we'll do now is we'll get it on the marks. We'll grab some U joint, or I mean, we'll grab some U bolts. On, is it on the mark? Yeah, I got it. So now we're gonna go find our U bolts and our U bolt plate. So we've got 31 spline curry axles with big Ford outer bearings. That'll do good. 31.155 inches. Something like that. Yeah. So we've also got a third member. We're gonna find that real quick. There's just something about fresh gears and nodular third members that just make me happy in the morning. I think Sleeping Colt would be proud of those. Something's going right today. 
We're gonna leave this here for now. We're not quite ready to install it. We have all the necessary parts with our lube locker gasket. All these came from Summit. While we're waiting on the U-bolts, we might as well get the gas tank in. We're using a tank, tank's ink tank. And Hillbilly is not allowed to blow this one up. We have to get an extra three gallons. No way. Bada beep, bada boop. Two banjo ones, not magic. Yeah. Yeah, I can go bada beep, bada boop. We have, have it done. done. Yeah. Well, I've got to figure out how to build a sending unit. I feel like both of you need to read instructions. <laughs> I already done did that. I looked at the pictures. Came with instructions. And so if you just read your instructions, first time for everything, and this is the first time in my life that I'm going to use instructions because I don't want to screw it up. I think I'm a little concerned as you're both reading instructions. I was finally able to get the fuel pump assembly all put together and installed. Hillbilly's getting the last little piece cut off on the, the fuel sending unit ready. Pop that in, it's time to put the gas tank in. We're gonna have like three or four parts installed after three days of work. All right, so after three hours, we read some instructions. We have this tank sink ready to go. So I've got the fuel pump all assembly all in. Hillbilly took his time and he got the fuel filler sending unit all correct based off of the instructions. So we're gonna bolt this tank in. That's one more step closer. Put all the right stuff on. In all the right places. <laughs> this is teamwork. <laughs> I'm just excited because it's one step closer driving this thing. So I think the tank is a little thinner than the old one because the old stop bolt points doesn't tighten up the strap to the tank. Move the stop nut up. I'm building some fuel lines because we need to get the fuel lines up on top of the tank before we put the tank in. And we didn't think about that. So now we're gonna take it back out, get our fuel lines up there and put the tank back in. Trying to think ahead, trying to not get in trouble. And we're getting in trouble. And we're getting in trouble, <laughs> a lot. But do we really need fuel? Oh yeah. This LS is gonna require lots of fuel. No Bluetooth fuel tank? No, none of those SEMA styles. <laughs> I don't know the length of my fuel line yet, so I'm just gonna be putting two ends on. We're just gonna put it up on top, tighten these up. We'll cut it to length, and that's what we're doing. So the nice thing about these fuel line kits from Summit, these are push-in style barbs, and they do not come out. Like literally, you just push them in, they have this style of barb and the hose does not come off. We didn't forget, we gotta put the fuel lines in before we put the tank up. Okay, we're gonna put the power and ground for the sending unit and then we're gonna put it back up in. There's not a power and ground. It's ground and the signal, no power. So if you have a ground and then you have a signal, what would you consider the signal? Another ground, just two grounds. Who would have thought that this would be an all day thing just to put a gas tank in? Okay, we've got our ground and whatever wire there. As soon as Justin gets back, we're gonna put our hose clamp on right here and it'll be ready to install. So we gotta remove this steering arm, tie it right on the hooks too. Yes! Voila! <sighs> Trying to figure out these spindles, which goes to which side. We got our hose clamps, so me and Hillbilly are gonna hurry and get this tank in. We've got the vent line, all our vent lines and fuel lines off. So all we gotta do is put it up in, then we can connect everything. We're not gonna drop it. And the very first assembly is all installed and tight. Yeah, that ain't going nowhere. You gotta tap it. Not and going anywhere. We're gonna get, get these all cinched down and then we're gonna get the pinion angle set. Make a mark, pull this out, weld the perches. We're building this rear end. That nine dollar prepack. See that? Got it! All right, so we've got this axle right where we need it. I'm just putting some paint marker on it. We need to go off site and weld these perches on. But the problem we have is it's after five. So we won't be able to weld these until tomorrow morning. So that's about all we can do tonight. Luckily, we've got the entire fuel tank in and done. We've got the rear end, we've got the leaf, the leaf springs are in, the rear housing is set, the front spindles, upper control arms and lower control arms are where they need to be. So we've got a few things done, but the good news is, is right outside that door, we have all our parts. We're coming to you live from inside the photography room at Summit Racing's headquarters. If there's anything in the background, just ignore it. But we've got a torque converter for the new TH, the new TCI transmission. We've got some cable, dipsticks, we've got a turn signal switch, dust cover. 
We've got motor mounts, brake line, and our painless wiring harness. Everything right here is for the 57 Chevy. We've got some header bolts, we've got a rack joint, we've got a transmission mount, we've got a set of headers, we've got brake rotors, We've got a flex plate, we've got a whole box full of goodies. All sorts of stuff, battery cables, uh, engine mounts for the LS, or convertible. Basically, this entire pile right here still needs to go into the 57. We've got downpipes, exhaust, gaskets. We've got our MSD control system because we're carburating the 6.2 LS. We're not putting fuel injection on it, which might sound crazy, but you know what? I've been around carbureted LSs for a long time. So we've got our coil pack rails. Right here, we've got our TCI Automotive Turbo 400. This is a brand new transmission. This thing's gonna get us all the way across with no issues. We've got a carburetor, and right here is our GM Performance Accessory Kit. So basically, we've got thousands of dollars of parts brought to you by Summit Racing. They all needs to be put on that 57 Chevy so we can drive this thing home. All right, so it may not seem like we got a lot done today, but we got a lot of little things that are gonna add up to big things. Yes. So with the help of Justin and Summit Racing, we're kicking butt on the 57 cross country road trip car. I don't even know. We gotta come 57 up with- 57 Frankenstein. We gotta come up with a name and a reason we're doing this. So we need your help. What should we call this thing? Help question mark, out. question mark, question mark. Drop a comment, let us know. But as always, we appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.